Well, is President Obama waging a war against whistleblowers? Under his administration, there has been more prosecutions of whistleblowers than all previous presidents combined. Pre-trial hearings are underway for one of them, WikiLeaks whistleblower Bradley Manning. The Army private is regarded as a hero for releasing a video which showed a U.S. Apache helicopter shooting and killing Iraqi civilians and two journalists. But Manning now faces a slew of charges, including aiding the enemy. If convicted, he faces a life, a sentence of life behind bars. Meanwhile, WikiLeaks editor-in-chief Julian Assange is fighting his extradition. Amid all this, are whistleblowers being silenced in the U.S.? And what's the future of whistleblowing in the federal government? Joining me now to talk more about this is Susan Lindauer. She's a former CIA asset and a whistleblower herself. Welcome, Susan. I uh, want to ask you, is whistleblowing being criminalized in the U.S.? Uh, they're trying to, but it's going to fail. Because the truth, is, truth will out. Uh, there, there's no way to suppress the truth. Uh, the Internet is so strong that even if the corporate media will not cover stories, it is possible now to get information directly from the net. Uh, and that is why WikiLeaks is being threatened and, and, and prosecuted, persecuted so badly, because they're trying to scare the Internet out of telling these stories. And it's not going to work. We are not going to back down. Uh, I want to ask you, because we are seeing kind of a trend, um, the Obama administration has prosecuted more whistleblowers th th than any other president. Um, why do you think that there seems to be this increased push to crack down? Well, I was one of the very first whistleblowers prosecuted. I was the second non-Arab American ever indicted on the Patriot Act. I was indicted after I approached the offices of Senator Trent Lott and John McCain, requesting to testify on Capitol Hill through proper channels about what I knew about Iraqi pre-war intelligence. I was the chief U.S. asset covering the Iraqi embassy at the United Nations for about eight years, and I knew every detail. What I knew was that there was a comprehensive peace framework on the table that would have addressed all of the complaints of the United States and Europe and would have given the United States a tremendous peace dividend with preferential contracts for rebuilding Iraq after the sanctions on, in all areas and cooperation with anti-terrorism. Uh, I knew that we, uh, that Iraq tried to let the FBI come into Baghdad and tried to give uh, financial documents on al-Qaeda to the United States and we wouldn't take it. When I requested to testify, 30 days later, the FBI shows up at my door with an arrest warrant. Subsequently, I was held under indictment for five years, denied the right to a trial. I was demonized, accused of incompetence on the allegation that I had a deep religious faith which was, I do believe in God, but it is, I am no Sarah Palin or Michelle Bachman or Rick Berry uh, at all. But, I, but they pretended that I was so that they could escape a trial which would have brought out these facts. Um, and uh, in my experience, this is a long-term problem. The government is using secrecy to protect politicians in power. They are trying to stop the American people and the world community from having accountability from the leaders. And that is the, a wrongful use of secrecy. Uh, a, a, people are much better capable of making better choices and decisions and guiding policy decisions if they have more information. Sticking on this idea of secrecy, I want to ask you, um, do you think that um, the government now is growing more secretive? And do you think that the government is increasingly becoming uh, less transparent? Yes, the government is very frightened of the people. And they are definitely uh, pursuing, they're, they're labeling things secrecy under secrecy laws that should never be considered classified at all. And if I were Bradley Manning's defense team, I would be arguing that uh, w one of the key points is that uh, intelligence is never supposed to protect politicians uh, from exposure of their human failings, foibles, mistakes, embarrassments. That is not what intelligence secrecy is for. It is intended to protect existing operations and to stop violence. Uh, if Bradley Manning, and, and some, with, with all due respect to Bradley Manning supporters, sometimes they go a little far when they try to give him credit for the Arab Spring. 
When they do that, they are, in fact, damning him in the eyes of the military intelligence. And I would urge them to stop. It is not true. It is not accurate. And uh, it is causing him problems. Because if he is provoking violence, then, they, then the military intelligence does have the right to shut him down and to prosecute him. However, if he is exposing war crimes by American soldiers, let's be honest, the Iraqi people already knew that American soldiers were doing these things. They're living through it. Their families, their friends, their neighbors, they're all suffering these consequences every day. This is a true case of blowback, whereby uh, there are consequences for American, intel for American soldiers in American military operations. And the American people can see that the occupation of Iraq was going badly. But because they were kept in ignorance of the real facts, they did not know why. So he has not never, the argument should be accurately, that he did not abet the enemy. He was not aiding and abetting the enemy by providing any intelligence to them that they did not already know. He was giving power to the American people so that we would understand what, why the occupation had failed so badly. And by making, by bringing us into the full scale, scope of knowledge, we are then able to give better instructions to our leaders and to demand that we get out of Iraq. I um, want to ask you, Susan, because you are a whistleblower mm -hmm. um, yourself. And um, how easy is it for someone to blow the whistle anonymously in the government? Uh, if someone uh, does know about wrongdoing and wants to report it, wants to take action, how can they disclose this information um, but at the same time protect themselves? Or, or is it even possible to do that? Or are media outlets like WikiLeaks one of the only venues to do this these days? I will tell you that I believe deeply that if I had had WikiLeaks before the war, we could have stopped the Iraqi war. I had information about the comprehensive peace framework that the public still to this day does not know about. We did know about 9-11, and that's a whole other subject. Um, we, but there was a comprehensive peace framework, and if I had been able to give that to WikiLeaks, the whole public, the whole international community would have been, uh, have, have, would have had arguments for stopping it and could have, we could have, we could have prevented the whole thing. We need WikiLeaks. The problem is, is that, that we are, uh, we must have public disclo disclosure in order to bring this, in order to stop bad policy moves. And lastly, Susan, I um, want to ask you, amid everything that is happening, mm -hmm. the trials, uh, the extradition, um, what is the future of whistleblowing in the U.S.? It's more imperative now than ever because of your previous question. The government is afraid of the people. We're moving more towards secrecy that does not affect national security. It only exists to protect the politicians from exposure and accountability to the people. And if, we could, if you can hide the facts from the people, a lot of bad decisions will be protected at, at a, exactly a point where if you were ex, where public exposure and public debate and, and discussion would, uh, would shut them, would shut down bad ideas. Linda, you, thank you, thank you so much for, for weighing in on this. That was former CIA asset Susan Lindauer.